In the lead up to Ahsoka, I've been wanting to do a video about Grand Admiral Thrawn's evolution in different portrayals, where he goes from a clear-cut villain, though not a cartoonish one in the original Thrawn trilogy, to later appearances like Outbound Flight in Legends and the new canon Thrawn trilogies also by Zahn, where he's almost unwaveringly portrayed as a good moral and heroic character. Today my good friend Eckhart's Ladder beat me to it, so check out his video if you haven't already. It covers the topic really well, especially as it pertains to Ahsoka. I do think there's a broader topic to look at here though, for both Legends and new canon fans. The relevant part for Ahsoka is naturally how Thrawn would be handled by Zahn versus how he'd be handled by Dave Filoni, whose portrayal of Thrawn in Rebels is more consistent with the original villainous Thrawn from the 90s trilogy, so Eck rightfully emphasizes that a lot. But I think this highlights a problem with how Zahn's legacy characters are handled by him in general. While this video will be pretty critical of that, I do want to say, much like my last video on Outbound Flight, that while this is going to be two videos in a row now that have some criticisms of him, he's still one of my favorite Star Wars authors, and we're going to be talking about some of my favorite Star Wars books today. Zahn is responsible for creating some of the most famous and well-loved Star Wars characters outside of the movies. You have not only Grand Admiral Thrawn, but also his right-hand man, Captain Gillen Pellion, who evolves into the leader of the Imperial Remnant over the 35 years after the Thrawn trilogy leading to his death, and Mara Jade Skywalker, who goes from a bitter rival trying to kill Luke to ultimately marrying him, both of whom help save the galaxy repeatedly in later stories. And it's understandable why these characters are so beloved. Aside from maybe Jorah Sabaoth, whose defining characteristic is basically just insane, there's more nuance to Zahn's villains in a lot of the Star Wars books than what came in other books, which is good, but Zahn's tendency to whitewash these characters' more villainous aspects is a problem that exists beyond just Thrawn when it comes to later appearances for all of these characters. Character development is naturally a good thing, and even shining some light on character backstories that may illuminate how they became who they were is good too. Seeing Vader's backstory as Anakin in the prequels doesn't undermine the fact that Vader is a villain, just because we know where he came from, for example. But what we see with Thrawn, Pelion, and Mara from Zen isn't so much that we get some backstory explaining how they became who they were, or that the character evolves in the future, it's instead that you kind of just go back to those characters and say, actually, they were never that bad to begin with. Pelion's case deserves its own video on the topic, it's a bit more complicated, but today we're talking Mara. To start off with, Mara's evolution over the course of the Thrawn trilogy is, I think, handled really well. She'd basically grown up being trained as one of Palpatine's best personal agents, called the Emperor's Hands. More or less brainwashed from the age of 18 into executing his will, and essentially Mara saw Palpatine as a father figure. So her position as an embittered ex-Imperial, disgusted with the way the Empire was crumbling and looking to kill Luke as the reason Palpatine was gone, further fueled by a final telepathic command from the Emperor makes sense. Over the course of the trilogy, by being forced to work with Luke, she comes to realize he's not what she had been led to believe, and through working together they create at least some kind of bond. Even though by the end of the trilogy they're really not friends, there's a mutual respect there, but I think the way that's handled is really believable. Some of that tension is still there for a long time, but their relationship evolves and ten years later, in the Hand of Thrawn duology, which begins the revision of Thrawn and Pelion as well, they get engaged. This story still involves and alludes to some of her remaining Imperial sympathies, but the more time Zahn has to develop the character, the more we learn her past was apparently not all that bad in the first place. In Survivor's Quest, the 2004 follow-up to the Hand of Thrawn duology, Mara and Luke see the results of the Outbound Flight Project, and Mara expresses that she basically never got exposed to the true downsides of Imperial policy, despite her closeness to Palpatine. I mostly agree with Luke's point in this scene, where he says it would make sense that Palpatine may try to downplay a big event, or at least spin them, but as Palpatine's hand, meaning she acts as a personal trained assassin among other things, her being shocked by how Palpatine could be so cold-blooded and meticulously plan outbound flight, basically a Jedi-run civilian project to try to explore and colonize outside the galaxy, only to be simultaneously planning its destruction, doesn't really make sense to me. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing that should shock her. In this same scene, she also expresses how her position with Palpatine was actually not quite so bad either. After her initial introduction in the Thrawn trilogy, where she was a cold-blooded killer on the path to being deprogrammed, we now get, quote, you never really saw the results of Palpatine's policies, did you? No, not usually, Mara said with a sigh. Not the big ones anyways. Alderaan and that sort. 
mostly I dealt with individuals or small groups, and half of them were Imperial officials suspected of embezzlement or treason. I never saw anything on outbound flight scale. So rather than it necessarily being Mara's redemption from a dark past, the more we learn about her past, the less dark and more sheltered it becomes. For all her jokes at Luke being a farm boy who knows nothing about real life in the galaxy, the further we go down the road of Mara not actually knowing how bad the Empire was in an attempt to retroactively make her not ever having been that bad, the more we get away from Mara as the kind of jaded and politically savvy actor making up for that dark past, and instead the only explanation about her history is that she's hopelessly naive in the way that she likes to portray Luke as. There's nothing wrong with a character having a redemption arc like Mara did throughout the Thrawn trilogy and afterwards, but San's tendency to have that arc loop backwards through time to the point that they were never all that bad just kind of undermines some of those characters and their development to me. In two more books, 2007's Allegiance and 2011's Choices of One, both by Zahn, we get a direct look at Mara's past. True to her word in Outbound Flight, her training under Palpatine ends up primarily involving taking out corrupt Imperial officials, stealing credits and other valuables, or committing other kinds of treason that don't involve directly joining the Rebel Alliance per se. She conveniently only gets sent after people making the Empire worse. In the course of this, she interacts with the Hand of Judgment, a group of five stormtroopers who disobey the orders they consider immoral. And she ultimately begins working with them and even vouching for them to Imperial officials on multiple occasions. She's then ordered to investigate allegations of treason against Governor Feruz of the Kandora Sector. Now, unlike what I said before, he was explicitly cooperating with the Rebellion, though he didn't technically join them. Mara was meant to go figure out if that was true, and kill him if it was. Once she gets there though, she learns he was working with the rebels under duress from a local warlord named Nuso Esfa, whose agents had kidnapped his family. So he was working with the rebels, but he didn't really mean it. Rather than executing him as instructed, Mara works with not just the Hand of Judgment, but also rebel agents including Luke Skywalker to help defeat Nuso Esfa, whose ultimate loss comes at the hands of Thrawn later on. And because of his circumstances, Mara lets Feruz live, and the Rebels manage to escape. So whether through Palpatine giving her the wrong missions, or just the circumstances that she ends up in, Mara conveniently avoids ever doing any real material damage to the Rebel Alliance. This to me seems like a pretty far cry from the Mara we get in the Thrawn trilogy. I'm not necessarily saying it makes her a worse character. Similarly with Thrawn, some of it adds nuance that wasn't there before, and in some cases I prefer the new presentations of the characters, but the point is that they are new presentations of those characters. Mara's heir to the Empire self could be rationalized as someone who's lost everything and got more hard and bitter in the period after that as a result, and then maybe she internally distorts her role in things a bit out of guilt, but the broader point is that much of this is consistent with Zahn's other characters. What used to be an accepted and agreed upon fact in universe that Mara had a dark past that she was making up for turns into through a mix of increasingly contrived circumstances that she was only really ever doing good anyways and Palpatine never told her to do anything that bad. In much the same way that in Thrawn's past we see how he was only ever helping people and there becomes a pretty big disconnect in how he goes from that to the kind of Thrawn that we see in Rebels or the original Thrawn trilogy, which that's closest to. The new canon Thrawn had a bit of a way out with this in that there could have been the choice made to only stick with the kind of heroic or even anti-hero Thrawn, but because of how Rebels went, we're not really going to be getting that. It does seem like Ahsoka is going to stick with the version we had in Rebels and the original Thrawn trilogy, and obviously that's not Zahn's fault but he does claim to see Thrawn's story through both continuities as one and the same story, so he would still have to account for how we get that heir to the Empire Thrawn. Either way, hope you've enjoyed the video. Again, check out X video for his Thrawn breakdown if you haven't already, and if there's anything else you want to see covered on this channel, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.